I just have to warn you what you're about to see. He gets dark. So today we're gonna do a wardrobe clear out. Hopefully you find this interesting and you do also learn something new to realize what you haven't been wearing, to realize what you like to buy a lot of but don't wear at all, and how to shop better. Moving forward from everyday clutter, it opens up a lot of space for you to grow and to prevent yourself from getting things that you didn't actually want to get or to get the best deal. I have a really good shopping tip for y'all. It's actually Shop Tagger. Shop Tagger is basically like an extension or an app depending on whether you're using using your desktop or your mobile and you can just shop as per usual if you like a particular item but you just kind of know it'll go on sale or if you want to wait on it if you want to think about it then you can click the shop tagger button to save it you can also choose options like what color what size so it's a very specific one it won't just like inform you that it's on sale and then it's not in your size and you're like what the hell am I here for? You'll be able to opt in for either like an email notification or even like a push notification on your phone so it really makes shopping very convenient and it makes it very fuss free so you can keep track of your favourite items while you deliberate if you want to get them you can wait for them to get on sale you can also be notified when your items are back in stock so I think it's just very convenient to have everything congregated in just one app also when you're saving your items they also have an option of like different wish lists so if you're looking for like let's say the perfect prom dress and you're looking across all the different stores you can actually like save them all and then look instead of like opening like 700 million tabs even stuff that you're on the fence about buying you can just like put them all together and see like okay maybe I have like a hundred dollar budget like what do I want to get within the budget and so you don't overspend so I find that Shop Tiger is a really really smart like app and extension to have and I do recommend you try it out this video is sponsored by Shop Tiger but it's been a long time coming like we wanted to collaborate for a really long time now so if you're interested in trying it out I will leave a link down below it's absolutely free you can just download it and see how you feel thank you so much Shop Tiger for sponsoring this video and let's move right along this open concept wardrobe is really, really amazing. I do recommend if you love your clothes and like, you know, you have a bunch of colours or if you have a very cohesive wardrobe. But a downside to having an open concept wardrobe is that it is seen all the time. If it's messy, you bet your ass you're gonna be able to see it. You can't hide it. Okay, bear in mind that this is the aftermath of cleaning everything up. I'm not 100% done yet. I don't do big declutters because I get very precious about my things. What I do like to do is I like to, you know, go through, as I go through, like, I'll take out certain pieces and I go, you know what, I don't use this enough. And I have to, like, not overthink it. I have to not try it on because if it fits, I'm like, oh, but it fits. And, like, I create a lot of, like, possibilities. I give a lot of second chances, you know. It's really, like, a bad dating situation. So I try my best to take that shit out. And because I know I've been wanting to do this clear out, I've just like sort of given up on like folding the clothes, putting it back nicely. All of this laundry is just here. And because I'm not home enough to deal with it, I haven't needed to deal with it. But now that I am home, <laughs> we gotta deal with it. Today, you're gonna be with me throughout this entire process. I just feel like because the clothes are in a mess, I allow everything else to be in a mess and I'm just gonna do a major, major declutter. I don't truly believe in minimalism because I'm like, well, you are a collection of the things that you keep, right? And I do like like keeping memories. I like, you know, experimenting with fashion and stuff. So I'm not the kind of person to have a capsule wardrobe, but I also do want to streamline the things into stuff that I really, really like. So all of these are freshly laundered, by the way. There are no dirty clothes. So I'm messy, but not dirty. <laughs> but I'm gonna put everything right here on this bit and we're gonna sort them through together based on three things. Instead of like sparking joy, I've taken a leaf out of Karen Britchick's book. I'm just gonna follow her rubric of three Fs. Fit, function, and fabulosity. First one, fit. Does it look good? Does it feel great? Have you already grown out of it? Have you, did you buy it in a wrong size because it was on sale and you really like the piece? Do you just like the idea of it more than the actual thing? Second of all, function. 
what do I need it for? If I don't have any other like white tank tops, for example, I'm keeping it here. If I already have a bunch of like black tank tops, I don't need another one that's just a little bit different. Finally, we are going to work on fabulosity. So if everything else defies logic, but I love it very much, I'm going to keep it. There's no point in trying to justify yourself out of like taking away something that you really like. So based on fit, function and fabulosity, I'm going to aim to narrow my things to about... I want to say 60 to 70 percent. Let's try and do a 60. I think 50 is like very drastic. Like, it's like getting half of my stuff. I'm not moving anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. So I just want to be able to create some breathing space for my clothes and to be able to see everything without feeling very like congested and very cluttered and very overwhelmed. So okay, without further ado, let's get to it. Before we even start, I'm already taking a tea break. one because I never actually wear it. Oh, I look like a teacher. No la, what am I doing? No, 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 absolutely not. Ah, God, this one. Okay, I never know what to feel about this. This is one of my favorites. I'm holding it upside down. This one, I don't know. No la, it's not me, right? It's just not me. So far, nothing is going to the trash. Everything is going to get swapped. To be honest, most of these clothes like deserve much better than me. Do you know what I mean? Like, they deserve to be worn, especially this one. It's, it's just such a nice wool. It's so soft. It's so comfy. And I just feel like if I can't give you what you want, either I'd be better for you or i pass you along. So I'm gonna pass you along. Okay, this is new. Oh, it's so soft though. Oh my god. Okay, so I'm still sorting through my stuff. I've ended the Insta Live. But so far, so good. I'm keeping... I want to say 70% of the stuff that I have and then some of these items are going to get swapped so yeah let me play some music <laughs> Um, as you can tell, I'm keeping a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, oh my god, the frame rate was off the whole time. It's maybe like 80% complete. I still need to go through a lot. And I haven't even gone through like my shoes and my bags yet. And that one needs a big declutter. I still feel like it's a little like choky. Like it's still a lot. Of clothes. Also tell myself like it's okay lah like if you want to keep it why not because you can always pass it along at another time. Right now I already have like three pretty big bags of clothes that I am decluttering. Because I am swapping clothes I was like why don't I just you know swap it like next month or something. So now when I was going through my dresses I realized that a lot of the things that I really like aren't things that I actually wear. When I do look at dresses I usually like the concept of them a lot more than how I feel when I wear them. So a lot of stuff that showed a lot of boob like super body con I didn't really keep. When you're thinking about function, you need to ask yourself, what is your lifestyle? How active are you? What do you need in your closet? If you're in the office but you love gymming or you love hiking on weekends, then you would incorporate both elements of that sort of wardrobe. And function to me also means what does this piece of clothing serve for me? So in order to really curate your collection and only pick out the best things, you gotta like look at two different pieces and go, okay, if I had to get rid of one, which one would I get rid of? They essentially do the same thing. You would choose the better one in the same situation. If it doesn't serve its purpose or if there's another piece that can better serve its function, then I let it go. Okay, fabulosity. Key collector's pieces that I'm really proud of, things that I have a lot of sentimental value, things that I'm waiting to wear, like I don't have the heart to just wear it on a casual day. And it makes me happy, like the Marie Kondo style, that's how I keep it. And that can also work on the flip side. So it fits you well, it serves its function, but it's just not fabulous. You can sort of put it in a maybe pile and you think, is there any way I can replace it, make it better so that I feel better in my clothes? I think that kind of mindfulness when it comes to like looking at your closet and looking at your wardrobe also ties in with like self-care and how you see yourself because there is sort of like a disjunct between like how we see ourselves and how we actually are. When you're looking at your wardrobe, you see a lot of the idea of you that you really like versus what you're actually comfortable wearing out. So for me, I love cuts and silhouettes and I love stuff that like are a little bit more low cut and they're just beautiful but 
but realistically, I would never wear it out. So that's honestly something that I had to grapple with and come to terms with, and I'm a lot better now. And I also noticed that I gravitate towards a bunch of different styles that I like to experiment. I do dress up every single day as my job. So it makes sense for me to keep a bigger variety of clothes. It makes sense for me to keep like dressier pieces. I've realized a lot of things. I've like grown a lot this year. And I kept them in five separate piles. And it sounds like a lot of piles, but they were all very specific. And they started from like three piles and it expanded to five. So one is yes, definitely keeping. I love it. I will always treasure it. It makes me excited. Second one is maybe. Maybe I want to get rid of it, but let's see how it fits. I'm not sure if it still fits me anymore. I'm not sure if I ever liked it. I'm not sure why I don't wear it. So let's try it again. Third one is ooh definitely need to throw away. It's stained, torn, very, very old. It's not in any condition for anyone else to have. That goes into the recycling bin. The fourth one is hair. It doesn't really fit me that well, but it's still a very beautiful piece of clothing. I can either sell them individually or I can just put them all together and submit them for like a clothes swapping program. So that's what I'm doing. I'm working with the fashion pulpits. It's not really donating because like the clothes swapping program is where you send all of your stuff in. They usually take time to to approve so don't send in shitty things okay like just please make their lives a little bit easier if it's not your style if it doesn't fit you right that's fine but if it's just very worn if it's pilling or if there are stains like just 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 put them in the recycling bin this one is for clothes that like still get a chance still can be loved again still can be worn by someone else it'll be treated like new and i actually do put a lot of things into this swapping program sometimes when you order things online and it doesn't really fit you and you're like frustrated every time you look at it you're like it doesn't fit like why did i spend like so much money on this instead of individually trying to sell it which you can do but I just don't have time to do that I'm just gonna put everything with them once you get the membership I usually like to get the unlimited one month one because I just find that it makes a lot more sense usually it's more than one round of decluttering there's like a one declutter and then there's like a residue declutter sort of situation after handing all of your items to them you get like a number of points depending on how many you submit the brands how good they are how much they're worth and then with the points you can shop in store they have like an actual it's beautiful it's like a boutique style like it's really really comfy and Ray the founder is such a nice guy he's so nice and he really cares about sustainability that's why he's doing it he makes it really upscale and really like fun and really like stress-free and you can just shop for however long you want and you can pick out the stuff and pay with your points so when I first heard about the program I was actually a little bit like huh I'm giving them my clothes and I still have to pay for the membership but it's for the manpower it's for covering rental it's really for the experience and I find that it's very value-added honestly I think the crowd that also swaps their stuff there is a pretty good crowd so like they have a lot of very nice pieces very office weary pieces and it's not a thrift shop you know so like I find that the curation there is really really well done every time you go there it's quite exciting you never know what you're gonna find if you're curious and you want to check out their store it's actually at Liang Court um, you don't have to pay to get in and you can buy stuff with cash if you don't have points if you don't have a membership but I do find that the membership is a little bit more value for money and it also allows for you to look at your own items and pass on the stuff that you feel like doesn't get enough love or use. If you do want to sign up for the membership, um, Ray and I have talked about it because we're friends now. If you want to actually sign up as a member, then you can quote my name, Brenda, at the, the you know, sign up. They'll make you sign up a little form. You get like $5 off. Yeah. That is my swapping pile. Oh, that's a very long story huh, for swapping. And the fifth pile is actually the bench pile. If you have like old school uniforms or whatever, like you know these like sentimental things that don't really fit in your current wardrobe but you still want to keep, then maybe you know you can set it aside and keep it. So for me, this pile consists of like Halloween props, um, video props, stuff that I just want to wear one last time just for the fun of it, and stuff that I should put away like heat tech stuff, like winter stuff and all that. So yeah. Those are my five piles. All right, so a problem that I had with a lot of my clothes, especially in my old house, when I had too many clothes, but I didn't have enough space. I do find that one of these inserts, I got them at Ikea for maybe like 15 to $25, really does a lot to help, especially when you have a lot of vertical space. So for me, I keep my long dresses on this side. And actually, you know what? Instead of hanging all my evening, like very, very fancy special occasion dresses, I actually put them in little like zip blocks. You know how like when you get pieces of clothing online you get those like things I keep them press them down you can also choose to vacuum seal them but I didn't lah okay you know and then I just put them underneath in like a little cloth baggie that I'll show y'all in a bit this makes so much more sense because before I always avoided looking at the long dresses because I was like I'm not 
going for an evening event. And then I miss out on all these like fun little like, you know, picnic dresses, like casual long dresses that I actually really enjoy wearing because I like the flowiness and I like the movement and I don't feel like the threat of being upskirted. Like it's just very freeing. So I really like long dresses. I used to separate them according to like sleeve length, but it just looked very messy, especially when you have an open concept. It's just better to color coordinate. And so how I do everything is I start from white. It goes into pinks and oranges yellow, green, blue, purple, and then black. And that's just a standard, you know, range for every single one. It's like a very loose interpretation of a rainbow just because it looks good and also it's easy for me to remember what comes first. These didn't come with, and I actually put my undergarments in them and I also put stuff like um, safety shorts, like camisoles, like skin colored camisoles so that they don't get confused, they don't get lost and all of that. I also forgot to mention, because I do run like a vintage jewelry and apparel store, I do keep like the inventory here. I separate them by like the color of my hanger so the things that are mine are like in black hangers and the things that are not are in like a bluey purpley tone. If I could, I would leave the entire rack for it but I just have a lot of stuff as well. And over here, I keep like very bulky pieces. So long sleeves or even pieces like this that don't really do well when they're folded because the little cubby on that side has very compact like materials and fabrics. And I find that it not only looks good but it's just very easy to access. So for me, I never never fold long sleeves anymore. They're just so bulky and you can only put like Three. All right, so below the dresses here, I have skirts, I have um, non-denim shorts, and then I have denim shorts, and then I have overalls at the back, just because I only have two, and if I want to wear an overall, I'll just like dig through the dresses and reach in. So from a lot of trial and error and like, you know, seeing how my wardrobe like disintegrates when I get more busy and messy and seeing what I put on top, I like to put the things that I use a lot more in front so that I don't have to like dig in. And I really tried to narrow down like my collection of denim shorts because I used to have about twice of this amount. And over the past few months, I've really tried to tell myself like, okay, if this is too short, or if this is too old, or this is too like, hoochie, like I'm not gonna wear it. And as you grow older, you realise that like, even the pieces that you really liked when you were younger, it just doesn't suit you anymore. Not to say that if you're a certain age, you can't wear certain things, but I personally found that like, the shorts that I wore when I was 16, like they don't look quite the same as when I'm 23. And I feel like I could level it up by having something a little bit more sophisticated or a little bit more different. So like, you know, suede and like stuff like that. Like, And also when you're like reorganising or decluttering your wardrobe, you realise what shopping tendencies you have. That's why I realised I tend to get like pink shorts, which is very very strange. Like blush shorts, I never noticed that about myself, but you know, here I am. And these different shorts do serve their own purpose and they work with different outfits and so I keep them. If you can't imagine what it will go well with in your wardrobe, then I suggest you take it out because then it doesn't serve a function. You really have to think about your wardrobe in terms of how it works with the rest of it. Because if you really consider everything like singularly, it's really difficult to mix and match different pieces because you're not thinking as a cohesive like what does my collection what does my wardrobe or closet look like right here we have trousers and you know me I love my trousers and it's one of the most difficult things to declutter because for a short like petite curvy girl like me when I find something that fits I really very rarely want to get rid of it and I have a bunch of stuff that either don't fit that great but serve a very great purpose and I don't have the heart to declutter and I don't have like any pieces that are like this colour so I'm just keeping it for now but I do know that eventually I want to pass it on. I have the things that I know I want to wear for like the foreseeable future right now up in front and then behind I have stuff that are either really really dressy like brocade pants and everything or stuff that I feel like right now is just not my style or I won't be wearing it for a while. This cloth bag, I guess, is from Shopee. I suggest you get something with a little bit more structure because this one is a very like flimsy. But I keep all of like my bikinis, my hats, my kimonos, stuff that I like beach holiday, like travel like serves a specific purpose all those stuff there because on a day-to-day -day basis I just don't need to look at it. I'm not the kind to wear hats anyway. So I keep everything in that box and I find that that works beautifully for me because when I open it that's what I expect to see like these things right and if I don't open it then I won't have to look at it just tucked away very neatly. And remember I told you about the long dresses and I kept the evening dresses I put them here as well. If you have a space like underneath your bed or something that's also a perfect place to put. Here are my jackets and coats and like outerwear pieces. This was actually up 
top and my blouses were down below and that was because I wanted to be able to look through my blouses a lot easier. But then I realised I wasn't getting a lot of use out of all of my jackets and my outerwear because it's very high up and because it's heavy, it just takes a lot of effort for me to look through it. I know it's a very first world problem situation but that's what I noticed didn't work for my wardrobe and so I switched them in. And I have like accumulated a pretty, you know, decent collection of jackets. It's probably more than the regular human, especially in Singapore, but I really do like layering and I like that all of these are very special and unique and like, look at this! Like this is one of my favourite pieces, I found it in Melbourne. And it's just really, really stunning. And I think when it was up there, I really didn't think to wear it more often. So putting it down here makes it more accessible and really encourages me to wear and bring it out and stuff. So I really like it. And last but not least, we have my blouses. I'm a blouse hoarder. Uh, I'm very aware of this. I really love collecting like vintage blouses, especially. I have a bunch of them like in a different print. I have them across the spectrum. They're really, really beautiful. And honestly, I don't feel the guilt of collecting them because that's what makes me happy and I do really wear them. I used these hangers when I was in New York because my landlord provided them and I was like, these are awesome. How do I find them in Singapore? They're a lot more expensive in Singapore. 30 pieces maybe cost around 20 $4, $25, maybe $50. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I'm gonna list it down below. I found it on Shopee and they just deliver it and stuff. And I purchased about 100 pieces. So on this side, with the jackets, with the blouses and the long dresses, I'm using these. And then for the long sleeve and the short dresses, I'm using a mix of like Ikea and like value dollar black hangers. If you're in the market for cheaper hangers, the Ikea one has like bigger ones that are better for, I wanna say blouses and blazers more like sleeved stuff and if you want stuff with hooks I really recommend you get the ones with actual like like dips so that your straps don't move and stuff like that. One thing about me is I really hate using one hanger for two pieces because it just makes it really messy and very cluttered so I'm very particular about hangers which is why I use this one because this one is super flat you can really like if I were to press them in I still create a lot of space. They can stack up really, really well. And because they're velvet and because they have this dip here, even with straps and stuff, they never ever slip off, even when you rummage through them like pretty harsh. So I really like this. You can get them in a bunch of different colours, but I always opt for the most simple and the most easily replenishable one. It's a very stupid thing to be so particular about, but when it's an open closet and when you take as much pride as like, you know, having your wardrobe collection as like, you know, full body and interesting as I I find mine, you really want to like splurge a little, you know what I mean? Like this this makes me very happy so I find that it's worth it. So that's how I structured my closet like from you know basic like short dresses, long dresses, blouses, jackets and then going by colour instead of doing like thickness of material or like sleeve length that sort of thing. If you live in like a place with more seasons and different climates and if it's fall and if you know you want to do like transitions and stuff it would make more sense that's what I did in New York. I had like short sleeve, um, no sleeves and then long sleeves and then jackets you know, I put them all together like that. Alright, so this is my jewellery setup. I just went ahead to clean it up because I was like, I'm going to show y'all anyway. And that wasn't that difficult. So I just keep my watches in here. They're a little bit messy. Then I have a small, like, little three-drawer pull-out. I house a lot of my everyday hoops, like the vintage pieces I want to wear the most, etc. Most of them are here. And then I have studs. This one I also got... Oh, well. This one I actually got online. This entire place is also littered with, like, perfume and stuff because, you know, I can see it. And then this one is a ring holder and this one is like a candle sort of holder that I got when I was in Bali and I just keep like my friendship bracelets like you know bands and stuff and pieces that I'm currently wearing a lot. And then here is an extension, I don't know if you can see but more like hoops and bracelets, um, necklaces, that sort of thing, sunglasses. I feel like we've been through this but basically it's just bras, home clothes, home clothes and like sportswear and then like bed sheets, towels, travelling stuff, that sort of thing. Yeah, so that's it. That is my wardrobe decluttered. I'm probably gonna do another declutter. This video took such a different turn from what it originally meant to be. I really wanted to do like the closet confidential tag while also decluttering and like showing all pieces since I am decluttering but I guess, you know, like life took a turn, I chose the wrong frame rate and I'm just really going through how I organise my closet now but I hope you guys found this helpful. This is something that I stick to a lot. The whole like fit function fabulosity thing and also how I organise my things to work for me and my lifestyle and my habits and it'll be really cool if you can incorporate it into your own collection and your own routine, your own closet setup as well. Also gonna be doing a part two for bags and shoes. That one might be interesting and because I have less 
of that as compared to clothes, I will be able to talk you through like, you know, significance and why things don't work, etc. So thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so much to Shop Tiger for sponsoring this video. If you liked it, don't forget to click the thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be here all week. All day, every day. I always reply to comments. I like talking to y'all. So please leave me something. Talk to me. Um, don't forget to also turn on your post notifications. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye!